Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife Kara is at work. And today we are going to sharpen this Spy 27 Para 3 Lightweight. We got stone clamp and two stones. Two diamond stones. These are ultra sharp diamond stones. A 300 grit and a 600 grit. Let's get to it. So here's the edge before I started sharpening. It was a decent edge, but I had used it a lot, so you know, and plus I'm testing the steel out, so I needed to get it on the stone. So finding the angle, you lay the blade flat down on the stone and you see the shadow. See the shadow going from the heel to the tip. Pay attention to that shadow. When I lift up, you're gonna see it go away. And pay attention to the heel, right where I had the pen. It's gone. It's there, it's gone. It's there. It's gone. Remember, the heel of the blade. And if you can hold that and slide it across the stone without rocking back and forth, holding it nice and upright, you will get a good, a good angle or be able to hold your angle. Once you find your angle... You're going to want to be able to keep repeating it over and over. And you see how I'm bringing it back and forth on the stone, holding the same angle. Try not to let it rock back and forth or anything, just holding that same angle. Now, in the beginning, you want to lock your wrist, hold your wrist, find your angle and move your elbow back and forth. Then to get the belly, you just lift your elbow back and forth and don't move your wrist, lock your wrist and just use your elbow for all the motions. But after you get good, you know, there's gonna be times where you are going to have to, you know, like watch my wrist, you're gonna have to lift your wrist a little bit or tweak backwards, you know, whether like this or like this, but it's such a subtle, tiny, tiny movement that you can hardly see it's happening. So you never want to go overboard with any movement. The tiniest movement is massive. Now, right here, I'm just lifting my elbow to get the tip right there. And now after I found my angle, I marked the angle on my finger and I'm marking where I'm going to put my finger. Now you do not have to do this. If you can hold your angle, it's not a big deal. But if you mark your finger right where your angle is and how high the spine of the blade is to your finger from the stone. So from the stone to the top of the spine of the blade, mark a spot on the blade that way, in, you know, like in between you can double check your angle. You don't have to keep using it, but you can at least make keep checking and making sure you're still at that same angle. And pay attention to the little tiny details, like if you're letting it go below the line or if you're leaning back going across the stone. Try to hold it nice and upright. You know, don't don't you know, pay attention if you are leaning forward or if you're letting the knife lean back. You really want to pay attention to all those little subtle details. And the better you get at it, the more you're really, or should I say the more you do it, the more you're going to notice the sounds and the feeling of the stones. I recommend diamond stones the most because they cut so fast. They're nice and flat. You don't have to worry about flattening them or anything else. Now, this is a 300 grit diamond stone. I'm only going to do two stones on this edge, a 300 and a 600 grit. That is a great, great edge. And you'll see afterwards how sharp this knife is. But being able to hold that angle and bring it across the stone and repeat that same angle is the most important and it's not that difficult it just takes a little bit of practice so that you can feel the difference between holding an angle and not holding an angle 
because you may be able to hold it once, but being able to repeat it. Now you see here how much the edge has already changed on that side. You can see the grip pattern, it's nice and even, but if you look at that shine right there, that means I haven't gotten all the way to the apex. You see that little glimmer right at the tip of the edge. That means my grit hasn't hit the tip of the edge yet. It's almost there, but it's not quite there. So I need to do some more passes to, until I get it all the way to the tip of the edge and have a burr. And this is why it's very important for you to follow the grip pattern because that tells you when you're, you're, you've got the whole bevel or when you've hit the whole, whole bevel and when you do have a burr. So I'm gonna continue the same exact angle. I'm not gonna move or change anything. I'm just gonna continue the same thing until that complete bevel is hit. If it takes a little longer, it takes a little longer. Now I'm feeling for the burr and I can tell that spot still hasn't been hit yet. So a few more passes. And, you know, however long it takes, it's gonna take. It's, you don't, you know, you just do it until, until that edge bevel is completely covered in grit and you have a burr on the other side. Okay, now I have gotten a burr on the other side, so I am flipping it over, doing the same thing. Holding my angle right there, I just cut the burr off. Finding really my angle and here we go. So you want to basically do the, or you want to just do the exact same thing, you know, hold the angle and don't do that, but <laughs> hold the angle and get it to slide across the stone. Now you don't want to put a lot of pressure. You just want enough pressure that you, know, it feels like you're slicing a layer off of the stone because you want to still be able to hold your angle and get the blade to grind against the diamonds. Now you can already see just from them few passes, I'm already, look at that, I already have a good grip pattern going. It's not perfect and it's not done, but you can already see I got a good grip pattern going. So we're gonna continue. And remember, I start with the heel of the blade. The heel of the blade is where I start. And you can kind of focus pressure you know, like starting at the heel and then as you go across the stone, you kind of regulate the pressure across the edge as you're, you know, like as you start lifting or, you know, as long, like as you're going to, into the belly and towards the tip, you kind of feel how the pressure's going from your dominant hand, the hand that's holding the, the handle of the blade. And don't, don't go fast. Like I'm going really fast because I'm trying to get it all in film in, in, you know, in a short video, but don't go fast. Take your time, go very slow, make every movement count. Like I said, focus the pressure at first uh, towards the heel of the blade. Then as you go across the stone, you know, let that, that focus center of pressure kind of move across. You know, it's just like basically where the stone is hitting the blade. But don't rush like I am right now. That's that's just dumb. Uh, I shouldn't have even went this fast. It's just I've gotten really good at it. So I, I, I can feel like when I'm moving all over the place, but I shouldn't be moving that fast. So take your time, go nice and slow. And right here, let's take a look at the edge, how it's looking. And you see the grip pattern looks really good. It's nice and flat. Everything looks appropriate. You can see the grip pattern goes from the top of the bevel down to the edge. And, you know, like if you see that it covers it, you definitely want to check it with your fingers and make sure that it's hitting, you know, all the way across from heel to tip on the other side. You can see the grip pattern on both sides is pretty good. And I can feel burr all the way up and down. So now we wanna switch stones to the 600 grit. So now that we're on the 600 grit, same exact concept. Now, I did notice that my, my belly wasn't perfect from one side to the other. So I'm just gonna do a slight little lean as I'm 
coming through the, the stone. So like as I'm coming across, I'm slightly leaning back when I get to the tip. Now this is more uh, kind of like more of expert moves and you know, it probably wouldn't make a difference, you know, in sharpness or anything like that. But you know, I get a little picky and I'm just, I'm leaning back a little bit farther as I go through my belly to the tip just to match the other side perfectly because I'm noticing that I'm not matched perfectly. So, but you know, that's, that's just me, you know, you don't have to do that, but it, that is a way you can adjust from, if you, if you have a little bit of inconsistencies, most likely your, you're dropping as you're lifting, like meaning like you're, you're letting your knife lean back a little bit as you're going across a stone, or possibly one side is just held a little straighter than the other. So, you, you know, you improvise and you, you make up the difference, basically. If one side's a little sh shorter of a bevel, meaning the angle's not laid back as far as the other side, well then, you know, you can make up for it by leaning the edge or the angle back a little bit farther in that specific area of the edge. Not the whole angle, just that area. Which, you know, learning how to do that does take time. It takes time on the stone. It's hard to know exactly what something's gonna do without doing it, you know, a hundred times and seeing the differences between when you did it, when you didn't, when you, you know, like just all the differences in how you hold the, the blade. Spiderco blade shapes are usually pretty easy to sharpen though. So they're, they're not the thinnest behind the edge. So they do take a little bit more work than something that's very thin behind the edge, but their heat treat is usually pretty good. And it's a pretty easy blade shape to sharpen. Their bevels are usually very inconsistent. So that is one thing. Um, I've only seen a few that were perfect. Most of them were not. But, you know, regardless, that's going to have nothing to do with how sharp your knife is or anything like that. You know, if your bevel's a little tiny bit off, it's not that big of a deal. The biggest thing is you getting, you know, a good angle going and, you know, having a sharp knife at the end. Let's take a good close-up of it. You see the 600 grit, completely different. Now, there's still some spots you can see that needs to be hit a little bit better. So, you know, obviously we got a little bit, bit more work to do, but it's going good. And, uh, you know, I, I try to make sure that when I put my knife back on the stone, that it's the exact same way. And you know, the, lo the longer or the more flatter your edge bevel gets and the better your angle is, the, the smoother it'll start feeling across the stone. So then when your angle changes or if you do something different, you'll feel it because it'll get grittier. So if, you know, like once you switch stones and you're at the 600 grit and your, your angle's going nice and smooth, you'll start feeling it because you'll feel it. It'll be a lot smoother across the stone. So now to the other side and tuning everything up, making sure I'm really happy with not just the grip pattern, but how flat it is and making sure there's no grip pattern coming through from the last stone. You know, just making sure I, I got everything perfect. You know, the, the burr, um, when, you know, like you, you can get by with just you know, once you got the burr, you know, you go to the other side, you knock off the burr, you know, you, you can do it like that. But sometimes, you know, you do wind up spending a little bit more time going back to the other side you already did just to maybe fix something. Um, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of times when you do that. It, but you, you don't want to do that too much because you don't want to leave fatigued steel. And fatigued steel is basically where you've worked on a side so much and it's not perfect. And then, you know, once you're done sharpening, there's part, there's pieces of steel basically that are disrupted or are, 
you know, they've been grinded across the diamonds or stones so much that it's kind of like weak steel. So you want to make sure, you you know, it's nice and flat and you don't have any weak steel on your edge. Because what will happen is, is you've sharpened your knife and now you think it's sharp but then, or you think it's good. You make a couple cuts and you realize your edge is already showing damage. Well, that's because you have fatigued steel on your edge. So... You want to watch out for for that. Every time when I've caused fatigue steel, it's because I've spent too much time on the stone or on, you know, one side of the knife and I didn't get it perfect. And I, you know, just kind of said, ah, it's good enough kind of thing rather than just continuing or taking a break and coming back and finishing it. But you're going to run into all these, those little tiny things as you, you know, learn to sharpen. And sometimes spider co blades are, are easier to sharpen because you can kind of do like a, a swooping motion, kind of like you see me doing right there, where it, it's kind of easy to just like kind of flow with the angle, which is kind of cool with their blade shapes. But, you know, you want to make sure you get really tight to that heel because they don't have a sharpening twill. So you want to get as close as you can to the heel of the blade to make sure you have full potential of cutting length and that your edge goes all the way to Spider Coast plunge grind. So at this point, I'm about done. I'm doing basically a burr removal. I'm very lightly going on each side and just doing a couple passes to get the burr to fold over to the other side. So the burr will fold over from one side to the other, from that side to the other, and it'll go back and forth and then it'll start falling off. Or it'll all come off in one shot, it just depends. But I'll do a few passes on each side and then very gentle single passes. You see how I keep flipping it, just doing a single pass on each side, checking the feel for the burr. I don't wanna put it to the strap with too big of a burr but just very gently across the stone. And this is fresh off the stone with the uh, on paper towel without a strop. So, and it's cutting the paper towel. Remember, I haven't even stropped and this is crappy paper towel. We'll show it after I stropped it, but this is just regular paper. I think I grabbed some tissue or some, uh, some box paper. Like it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, like phone book paper but it's more, yeah, right here. This stuff, is, it's kind of like phone book paper, but it's like the paper you would put in stuff, like the stuff a box for packaging. And it's cutting so clean. It's just this stuff has a bunch of like wrinkles and stuff in it. So it's not gonna cut as clean as it would if it didn't have all these damn wrinkles in it. But it's actually cutting very, it's, if you guys could feel it, it is so sharp. And I'm gonna show it here in just a second. It's just this paper so wrinkly but you can see how smooth it goes through at times if it doesn't hit on these damn wrinkles. But yeah, it's very, very clean cutting. It's just, you know, you see that big wrinkle I hit, so. But let's show it for real. First, we're gonna hit it on the strop. This is the Viking strop with diamond spray. So this is a harder leather I've been, you know, practicing and trying it out. I normally like a little bit more of a furrier leather, but this, you know, it's okay. It's not, it's not horrible. I do like it. And let's test it on some paper. That was my fault.
All right, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.